This is Plant-Based Briefing. Tofu, what it really is and how to enjoy it. Part 1 by Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, host of this curated content plant-based podcast, where I narrate a variety of articles on plant-based and vegan living with permission in about 10 minutes or less every weekday. And today's article is a bit longer than that, so it's a two-parter. I'm reading part one today, and I'll read part two tomorrow. It's by Brigitte Jem, who comes from a family of dairy farmers, and she came to veganism from the environmental perspective. She was a good green citizen and was a big advocate for cycling as transportation. And then someone planted a seed when they said, if you're fueling that bike with steak, you might as well be driving a Hummer. And the rest is history. She's now vegan, and she helps others cook more plants. She offers a wonderful whole food plant-based meal planning service that I subscribe to. She also offers workshops about nutrition and cooking topics and the mindset of cooking. And she has a batch cooking club. You can join and you can cook with her and with others from around the world, frankly. One time I was there and there was also someone from England and I think somebody from Australia. And she has a book called Flow in the Kitchen, Practices for Healthy, Stress-Free Vegan Cooking that I highly, highly recommend. It's not just a cookbook. She does have some recipes in there, but it's more about the mindset and practices for, like she says, stress-free vegan cooking. So you can find that all at veganfamilykitchen.com. And now let's get to today's plant-based briefing. Tofu, what it really is and how to enjoy it. Part one by Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com. How to cook tofu and include it into your meal plans and batch cooking sessions. How to cook tofu so it tastes good? In North America, there's wide misunderstanding about, and even prejudice against, this classic vegan food gifted to the world by Asian makers 2,000 years ago. Let's clear the air and make room for more tofu in our kitchens. In this article, I will cover some key questions about tofu, how tofu is made, what are tofu's benefits for plant-based cooks, the different kinds of tofu and how to use them, and suggestions to include tofu in both batch cooking sessions and quick meals. Be warned, some of my opinions about tofu are controversial. My tofu love story. I love tofu, but it wasn't always the case. I remember buying a block of extra firm tofu, using half of it, feeling underwhelmed about the results, and leaving the rest to grow moldy. I had no idea what to do with it. Then I moved to the West Coast and started eating at sushi restaurants more often. A wise friend introduced me to agadashi tofu deep-fried cubes of medium-firm tofu, and I was hooked. The melt-in-your-mouth pieces of silken goodness showed me that tofu was not a meat replacement. It's its own thing, and it's delicious. Unfortunately, standard agadashi tofu contains bonito fish flakes, but some restaurants make it vegan. When I transitioned to a fully vegan diet at home, tofu became my best friend, even more so when I discovered that my toddler daughter was very happy to eat it, uncooked and plain. I thought it was weird until I tried it. That's when I connected the dots. In fact, tofu is fresh soy cheese. More on this below. As someone who used to love fresh mozzarella, I learned to embrace tofu. We now have tofu a few times per week. I prepare tofu for the week in Sunday batch cooking sessions, but I also have a few tofu tricks up my sleeve for quick weeknight meals. Is tofu a processed food? How is it made? Tofu is a minimally processed food. Anyone can make it at home with simple ingredients, soybeans, water, and lemon juice or another curdling agent. Nothing to be scared of. These are the main steps to making tofu. 1. Soak some soybeans overnight, then drain. 2. Blend the soybeans into a slurry with fresh water. 3. Filter the slurry through a superfine mesh sieve or cheesecloth. Set the pulp, okara, aside to add to baking projects, making vegan fish sticks or your own miso paste. 4. Transfer the resulting soy milk into a big pot. Bring it to a boil. 5. Turn down the heat and add the curdling agent, lemon juice, gypsum, or nigari. Stir. Allow the soy milk to curdle for a few minutes. 6. Ladle the curdled soy milk into a cheesecloth-covered tofu mold or equivalent. Press and allow to drain for a while. And 7. Enjoy your tofu. It's simple, but time-consuming. As Nainai says in the delightful children's book, tofu takes time, a lot of time. That's why most of us, myself included, prefer to buy it ready-made. The good news is that many big cities have a local tofu maker. Find yours and support them. Four unusual reasons why I love to cook with tofu. Reason one. It has the mouthfeel of fresh cheese and hard-boiled egg whites. 
Stop thinking of tofu as a meat replacement. Tofu is shorthand for soy milk curds, which is quite similar to how dairy cheese, or animal milk curds, is made, notably the fresh curds used for poutine. People often say that tofu is tasteless, but the same is true for fresh cheese and egg whites. It's the texture that's special. Reason two, it creates contrast when you bite into it. Nothing beats biting into a cube of tofu that's crisp on the outside and smooth on the inside. In a noodle soup with lots of chunky vegetables, soft tofu cubes that melt in your mouth also provide a lovely contrast. Adding tofu is an easy way to bring diverse textures into a dish. Reason three, tofu is so nutritious. As a soy-based food, tofu offers complete protein, yet hardly any fat. Plus, if you choose the calcium set type, my favorite, you'll make it much easier to meet your daily calcium target. See my article, Calcium for Vegans, linked here. Reason four, it's extremely versatile. There's always different types of tofu in my fridge, ready to complement my favorite veggies in a bowl, stir-fry, soup, or scramble. It can even be thrown in the power blender with a little broth, roasted vegetables, and seasonings to become a luscious sauce. Not every tofu is the same. There are many varieties of tofu. Here are some of the factors that come into play to create all that diversity. Coagulant type and quantity. Calcium sulfate, or gypsum, and magnesium chloride, nagari, are the two main types of curdling agents used in commercial tofu. You can also buy those products at gourmet stores for home use. Nagari comes from seawater and has a slightly bitter taste. I personally prefer calcium set tofu. A firmer tofu requires more curdling agent or a combination of both, which creates a distinct flavor. Regular versus silken. In regular tofu, as described above, the whey, or the watery residue that separates from the curds, is pressed out, resulting in a kind of dense loaf like cheese. Silken tofu, usually nagari based, is made without removing the whey and has custard like consistency. Soybean origin. The soil in which the beans were grown will impart a subtle flavor to the beans, as will the water used. Some brands sell tofu made with soybeans that were previously sprouted, which also changes the taste. Some find sprouted tofu easier to digest, but personally I don't care for it. Further transformation. Some supermarkets carry marinated, smoked, fried, pressed, puffed, and otherwise prepared tofu. There's also ready-to-eat sweetened dessert tofu with fruit. Fermentation. Some soy products are fermented, like so-called stinky tofu, an acquired taste. And shelf-stable. Silken tofu is also sold in aseptic packaging in a variety of textures. The brand Morinu is most common in North America. Not a bad thing to keep in the pantry in case of a tofu emergency. Buy different kinds of tofu and taste them before cooking to experience the difference. You just listened to Tofu, What It Really Is and How to Enjoy It, Part 1 by Brigitte Jam at veganfamilykitchen.com. And I'm Marian Erickson, your host. Tune in tomorrow for the second half of this article where you'll learn why you should stop pressing your tofu, whether you should marinate it ahead of time, how to save time on weeknight meals with batch cooking tofu, and how to improvise quick weekday meals and lunches with easy tofu tricks. So please share this episode with anyone who might benefit, and thanks for listening.